What happens when you combine over 100 pet-related rescue groups, businesses, and services under one roof? Then mix in a couple hundred dogs. Sound like fun? Well, it does for writing tales. I'm describing the Beantown Pet Expo that took place this year in Plymouth, Mass. We met volunteers from some amazing charities, spoke with a few small businesses and owners, and met a few celebrities too. Hang on to your leash and let's head south. Hi, my name is Harrison Forbes. I'm the MC of the Amazing Pet Expos here, and we're glad to be talking to everybody that is watching Reading Tales. So Amazing Pet Expos is really a unique opportunity for pet lovers to come out in their community. They can even bring their dogs out, which, you know, there's not a lot of pet events where you can come and bring your dog and talk to different trainers. There's about 80 booths here. Most of them are local and regional businesses. Some of them you probably didn't even know were here in the area. So it's a great place to kind of a, a community of other dog and pet lovers where you can come and find out information, find out about some of these other uh, goods and services, and make your way around and spend a day for pet lovers. So while there's a lot of local and regional businesses here, we also have demonstrations going on. There's agility dogs, there's uh, the area canine unit is doing uh, drug and bite work. There's speakers up on the stage talking about everything from pet first aid to BSL legislation to behavior modification. Uh, Shorty Rossi, the star of Pit Boss is here. He's making a presentation this afternoon. So there's a little bit of something for everybody that is a pet lover here at Amazing Pet Expos. Something near and dear to my heart, and <laughs> hi, my name is Juan Valdez. I'm the owner of Midas, who's a 2014 Dogs on Deployment mascot of the year. Uh, and just to tell you a little bit about Dogs on Deployment. Uh, the main focus of Dogs on Deployment is bringing peace of mind to service members and veterans. Uh, initially, we started back in 2011 to give that peace of mind to service members deploying to Iraq and Afghanistan and to service members getting stationed overseas. Now, with a lot of us coming back, you know, guys are getting diagnosed with PTSD and they won't go to inpatient treatment because they don't have a place for their dogs to stay. And now Dogs on Deployment provides a network of volunteers to foster their pets and I mean we're spread across the entire country uh, originally we're based out of uh, San Diego California and what a service member has to do he goes to dogsondeployment.org signs up and he you know he looks for fosters in his area he'll get a list of fosters and he just kind of picks and chooses and it's up to the, the service member to kind of do his due diligence to find the right foster home for his pet. Yeah, because we have a process. People, I hear people say, oh, that's what you were telling me. And I will let you know. Hello. 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 Hello.
good with cats, other type of pets as well. The dogs we have live with cats uh, and some rats as well. They have a hair coat. They do not have an undercoat, so there's not a lot of shedding involved with them. And they're just, as you can see, they're so relaxed and mellow and just a nice stable temperament. Could not ask for a better companion dog. Um, I had got my first one back in the 1970s and I've had them ever since and have gotten very involved with the breed since then. Hi, I'm Gina with Cape Cod Therapy Dogs and Just Dogs Training. Uh, we train from north of Boston on down to the Cape. Uh, we have therapy dogs and just good family dogs. Um, these are three of our dogs here. The oldest one is two years old. The others are under two. Uh, very well mannered dogs. We visit nursing homes, schools. We work at Mass Art College. Uh, we work with children with autism, and we work with uh, patients that have traumatic brain injuries. So we have a wide uh, background of therapy dog visitations. The first dog we have is Stormy, who's a two-year-old uh, Dalmatian. You don't always see Dalmatians doing a ton of therapy dog work. Stormy is an awesome, correct size. She's small, but correct size, two-year-old Dalmatian. Next to her, we have Jumpin' George. And George is a one-year-old Irish setter. Um, she is also, the two of them are best friends. Um, George is also learning how to pull other dogs in a cart. And George wants the camera on her. And next to her we have, we have our baby Cavalier. Her name is Penny. And Penny was, is 10 months old and was only adopted about a month and a half ago. Um, and Penny is amazing for a 10-month-old Cavalier. Um, also, if I don't know if you can get it in the wagon, we have Melody, a very, 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 very happy Golden Doodle. Uh, Melody is a sweetheart. Melody. And all of these dogs, except for Penny, who's a little bit too young yet, therapy dogs must be one year old to be tested and registered. Uh, but all these dogs at a very young age are therapy dogs. Also to the left of Melody, we have the dog sleeping in a chair. We have Teddy, and Teddy's our oldest dog today. She's four years old, and she's a teddy bear, which is a combination of Shih Tzu Bichon. Um, so we have just some really, really, we also have to the left of Teddy, we also have Bud, who is a three-year-old golden deceiver from Plymouth, Mass. And Bud is our newest member of the Cape Cod Therapy Dog Program. Um, so we have a wide variety. You can have a mixed breed, you can have a pure breed. As long as we work on having them be obedient, well-mannered pets who love to visit with, with uh, people, we can certainly make them a therapy dog. So one of the other exciting things that's going on is I'm working with Wisdom Panel this year and they do the pet DNA test where people can find out the lineage of their dog. You know, if you've got a mixed breed dog for years, you probably sat around at Christmas and all the family chimes in of, oh, I think he's a little bit of this, think he's a little bit of that. Well, now you can find out for sure. And besides the novelty of it, there's a lot of really good sound medical reasons and behavioral things that you can do uh, once you find out that information. You know, if you've got a dog that has a lot of retriever uh, breeds in its background, you know that there's certain ways you can do the training to best utilize that. Or if, say, you've got a breed in the background that maybe has a lot of instances of hip dysplasia, you know as that dog gets older, you want to kind of stay out in front of that. So there's a lot of great information. The pets can't always talk to us, but their DNA can tell us a lot. So Wisdom Panel worked with Blue Dog Shelter here in Massachusetts to test eight of their dogs that are available for adoption. And we have one of the dogs on site right here. So this is Jack. Jack is not too surprisingly uh, got quite a bit of hound in him. <laughs> he is, we found Red Bone Coon Hound, Blood Hound, and then Manchester Terrier. It, it is quite surprising uh, that there's Manchester, Manchester in him, though. You, you know, you wouldn't guess that, even a trained eye. I mean, I see quite a bit of dogs every day. Um, there's over 100 dogs that walk through my, my door every day. And um, to think um, a trained eye like mine would definitely not say 
There's a Manchester Terrier right there. Visual identification based on what the wisdom panel has found is really only accurate about 25% of the time at, based on lots and lots of studies that we've seen. But with that said, there's usually a breed that's pretty predominant like Jack where you, you do kind of see a resemblance to a particular breed that you would suspect. So, you know, like Hound with him, you're not surprised at that. But then there's something else in that background where you're thinking, really? <laughs> you know, so that's, that's kind of a typical result when you find out the breed background. Yeah, see, you know, I know. We're taking them to some places that get a little bit more stress or a little bit more because you're missing the greatest opportunity to. Bald is beautiful. Mona. She's a rescue. Hi, I'm Diane and I'm a volunteer at Massachusetts Vesta Dog, an all volunteer um, nonprofit organization that helps raise money to put bulletproof vests on dogs throughout the state of Massachusetts. All working dogs, police dogs, be it a county, a state, local police, sheriff, they're eligible for these vests. What we do is we, as I said, we raise money to provide the vests. We also can help provide first aid kits, training equipment. Um, we can help fund dogs for departments. We have been around since the year 2000 with Kathy Hines' daughter being the inspiration for vesting the dogs throughout Massachusetts. And we're enjoying coming into our 15th year, starting up our 15th year. What makes it possible for us to do this work is all of our wonderful donors out there. Without the donors being generous with their nickels, dimes, pennies, twenties, anything they can give, we wouldn't be able to put the vests on these wonderful working dogs that help protect the community throughout the state of Massachusetts. The bulletproof vests will help protect them against gunshot wounds, knife stabs. Also, if somebody decides to kick or hit them with something, it, it helps dissipate the blunt force trauma. The officers are appreciative, no Knowing that their partner can respond to a call with them, knowing they have a vest that will help keep them safe. Because these dogs not only are their partner, but they they're a lifeline. They spend more time with the handlers than the handlers spend with the families oftentimes. And for them to know that they can go into a situation that their dog is protected, it gives them peace of mind and enables them not to have to worry and do their job better. We can't do, we, they can't do their job without these dogs and we can't do our job without our fabulous donors. Hey, I'm Shorty Rossi. As y'all know me from Pit Boss, I'm here talking to you guys on Reading Tales. We're here in Plymouth, Massachusetts at the amazing Pet Expo which we do about 32 cities a year. These are great places to bring not only your family members, but your other family members, your pets. There's so many things to do for your dog or cat here. And then at the same time, you can also get vaccinations, find information about spay and neutered, even get your dog's nails trimmed, learn about behavioral issues. There's a lot of things going on, even a dance contest and a costume contest. If you want to follow me and my boy Hercules in the back, who's not listening to nobody, you can do that on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, at Shorty Rossi. And again, thank you for watching.